Hi guys, we are getting ready to start our second lesson on decimals where we practice reading numbers and adding more categories. So if you've watched the first video on the introduction to decimals, we practiced some with reading larger numbers. So I've got some ready here and we're going to look at these one at a time and practice reading them. So if we start with this first guy, remember the rule is you say for and. Then you read this like a regular number and you say the last category. So this says 859 thousandths. Then we can look at this guy. I've made it a little bit different. 7 and just a regular number that says 28 thousandths. Even though this was 859 and this is 28, they both ended in the thousandths category. And I have this example. Sometimes you skip other categories. This one, if we look at it, says 9 and 307 thousandths. Let's also compare these decimals. If I look at these decimals, even though 859 is bigger than 307, I look at my largest category that I have. This is a 9 and this is a 4. And which number is bigger, 4 or 9? It's 9. So this entire number is bigger than this entire number. Another tricky thing for people to remember is let's say I had something like this. I'm going to compare these two numbers and they end in different categories. If I look at this, it says 4 and 85 hundredths. And this one says 9 and 307 thousandths. So when you're comparing categories, I can see that I don't have any hundredths here. And I can see that I do have a thousandth. Even though there's no number here, you can pretend that there's a zero there. 850 thousandths is the same thing as 85 tenths, even though that's a little bit harder for you to think about sometimes. So again, still looking at your biggest category, I can see that I have more units here than I do here. So that doesn't really change anything. I can also see that I have more tenths. I can see that I have more hundredths. Now over here, of course, I do have more thousandths. This would be zero. But 885 hundredths is bigger than 307 thousandths. So let's add another category and practice reading other numbers. We're going to introduce the ten thousandths number right here. So this alone says two ten thousandths. This one says three ten thousandths. And again, if you get stuck, you can also just count the categories over. I have a little chart here that I made that um, I can use anytime I get stuck. So I can look here and go, uh, there's my decimal point. One, two, three, four. Four digits over. There's my decimal point. One, two, three, four. And that says ten thousandth. So that lets me know that's the category. And a lot of times when you're reading larger decimals, you actually want to count ahead first, see what the category is, then read the number. We also have, we could go on, we could have four ten thousandths, five ten thousandths, and so on. So let's make a number where we combine all the different categories that we know and practice reading them this way. Again, remembering you line up your decimal point. Like so. So when I look at a number like this, the first thing I really want to do is figure out what's the category that the number ends on. A tenth, hundredth, thousandth, ten thousandth. That's the first thing. Now I'm going to read this like a regular number. 
4,752 ten thousandths. Let's try another one. All right, the next number that we can try, let's add a unit in here. Lining up my decimal points. Now every whole number has an invisible decimal point after it. When you have a whole number just like this, what it's really saying is eight and no tenths, no, no decimals after it. You could even have something like 28. Really, we just know it means 28 and no little pieces after it. There's zeros after it. So rather than write decimal point zero, a lot of times people just don't put anything there. But that is something to know. All right, let's see here. I'm gonna go and get this guy. So now I've added a unit on top, and I have this number. So the first thing I want to do is make sure I know what category I'm ending on, and then I can read the number. 8 and 9,469 ten thousandths. Now, let's practice making things a little bit trickier, and we will take out a few categories and practice reading different ways of doing this. This says 8 and 469 ten thousandths. What if I change it this way? Take a moment to think about how you would read this. It says 8 and 409 ten thousandths. I could even do something like this. Mm, which one do I want? I wonder if I had something like this and this. This is what I want. This one would be 8 and 49 ten thousandths. So you can see that you can skip categories and they can have zeros. It doesn't affect anything other than you keep the same category that you end on and read it like a regular number. So I think we're ready for hundred thousandths. Let's add a harder one in there. So here we are at hundred thousandths. That says one hundred thousandths, two hundred thousandths, three hundred thousandths, four hundred thousandths, and we could go on all the way to nine hundred thousandths. Something else I would like to mention is that a hundred thousand is much bigger than, say, a ten. It doesn't work that way for decimals. If you think about it like pizza, one of my favorite foods, I would rather have a tenth of a pizza than a thousandth of a pizza. So even though hundred thousandth sounds really big, it's actually quite, quite small. So try to keep that in mind. Let's practice reading numbers now adding up to hundred thousandth category. Here's my number. Oh, my decimal point is hidden. So again, I'm going to first figure out what my category is that the number ends on, then I'll know how to read it. And if I forget, I can just count by categories. Tenth, hundredth, thousandth, ten thousandth, hundred thousandth. Okay, so I know I'm going to say hundred thousandth at the end. This says six and. 47,369 hundred thousandths. So you can see why I said the hardest part about decimals was reading them. Let's try another one. Let's say I just take out some categories and I'll practice reading it this way. So again, I'm still in the hundred thousandths at the end of the number. So I'll say six and 7,369 hundred thousandths. 
what if I have something like this? How would I say this? Well, same rules. I end on hundred thousandth, so I read it like a number. Six and three hundred nine hundred thousandths. Let's try another one. Let's try a number like this one. All right, I still am ending in the hundred thousandth. So, zero and forty three thousand five hundred. 76 hundred thousandths. So you can see that this is pretty difficult and it's also something that's really good to practice. So there are some games that you can play. Um, you can write numbers on note cards and quiz your family if they're willing to play with you. That might look something like this. For some people it really helps them if they write the numbers in the matching colors. But let's say you don't want to do that. I can just write a number like this, starting off very easy. And I might say, on this side I write the digits, and then I flip it over. Now this says zero and 36 hundredths. So I can flip it over and write 36 hundredths. And you can make a lot of flashcards like this. Something else you could do is practice looking at your categories. So you could just write a number, perhaps something like this, and then you underline one digit. Let's say I will underline this, the four. So then on the other side, instead of writing how to say the whole number, you write the category that you've underlined. And again, we have these, so I know that this one is a tenth. So on the back of this, I can write tenth. So this is a fun game that you can play with a brother or a sister or your mom or dad or a grandparent, um, and you can make a whole stack of these. And then you can collect the cards at the end of the game and maybe whoever has the biggest stack is the winner. These are also really great just for quizzing yourself. So you could write a whole stack of these and just see how many times you can get through the deck with correct answers. So those are just some good ideas for ways to practice reading these numbers.